Rosie and Bill Show wish to thank our primary sponsors, The Mallon Agency, located in Springfield, PA, where they take pride in exceeding expectations every time. Anthony DiCecco and our friends at Tennis Addiction are ready to serve all your tennis needs at their beautiful facility in Exton, PA. Welcome everyone to the Rosie and Bill Show. And for those of you new to the show, thanks for coming on board. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook so you never, ever miss an episode. Folks, we are so excited about our guest tonight. She is a bona fide Broadway star, earning Tony Award nominations for her roles in Cinderella and Bonnie and Clyde. She's also starred in five Hallmark movies. And at the age of 21, she won the NBC reality show, Grease, You're the One That I Want. Please welcome to the Rosie and Bill Show the guest that we want right here, right now, Laura Osnes. Laura, welcome to the show. Hi, Bill. Hi, Rosie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so delighted to be here with you tonight. Laura, we're so excited to have you. We haven't quite had a guest like you on the show before, so we're definitely excited about this. And I, I have to tell you, I mean, we've watched a lot of your videos that we've been able to catch online. And my God, you are so talented. It's ridiculous. Wow. That means so much to me. Thank you. Thanks for doing your research and uh, now becoming loyal new fans. I appreciate it. <laughs> you're welcome. I mean, you know, it's you're this tiny little thing and you've got this huge voice and uh, do you have any dance experience too? Were you like kind of the triple threat? I was. I, I I really enjoyed the triple threat thing. I grew up dancing in Minnesota, where I'm from, and I took dance for like 13 years as a, wow. as a young okay. adult. That's wonderful. Okay. So so you weren't afraid when you were going to the EP, EPAs in New York? Well, I, maybe you didn't have to do that. Maybe you bypassed that with an agent appointment. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't. What happened is I did that TV reality show that Bill mentioned when I was 21. I flew to LA and I stood in line with thousands of people and I ended up winning this reality show that cast me as Sandy in Greece on Broadway when I was 21. And so I, I in a way, fast-tracked my way to New York um, and got to do Greece on Broadway for a year. But that process of being on a reality show was also quite grueling um, for what it was. But um, I was so, so grateful. I kind of got to moved directly to New York, knowing I had a year long job, which is an incredible blessing. That is. And I'm going to let Bill get back to that in just a moment. But before he does, I want to tell you that I was a little jealous because I watched you perform for Dick Van Dyke's induction, uh, at the Kennedy Center. What was yeah. that like for you? I mean, he's like one of my comedic idols. We tried to get him on the show, but haven't had any luck yet. But oh. did you get to meet him afterwards? Here's the thing. I unfortunately did not get to meet him because this was summer of 2021 and COVID was still, there were all of these protocols in place. And so the that particular performance was outdoors that year. It was not inside at the theater like it usually is at the Kennedy right. Center. So we were under this big tent on a stage, but he was like 15 feet away from me. And I got to sing It's a Jolly Holiday with you, Bert, directly oh. to him and his face. He was just beaming. I mean, he's the most like youthful, jovial human being and he's like a hundred years old um and so it was it was an incredible honor and I was so delighted and honored that they thought of me for his tribute um you know Julie Andrews has also been one of my idols and her voice introduced my name um for that performance it was like and now please welcome to the stage Laura Ostis and it's like I'm like this is Julie Andrews saying my name so it was uh it was a very much a pinch me moment I just got goosebumps, Laura. <laughs> Me too. I, I still get them when I tell the story. It was it was pretty magical. I'm, I want to circle back to Greece because, and you, you just touched on it a couple minutes ago, Laura, when you said that you're standing in line, thousands of people. What inspired you to take that shot? And what was that grueling experience like for you? Yeah. So I, I have always wanted to be on Broadway since I was like five years old. And it just so happened that I was playing Sandy in a regional production of Grease at a dinner theater in Minnesota at the time. Um, I ended up leaving college early. I, I only went to school for a year. And then I, I started working. I got offered jobs. So I decided to like put school on hold 
because I was studying to do musical theater, but then I was getting jobs to already do musical theater. So I thought maybe I'll, I'll go back to school someday for something else. And so I was currently playing Sandy and I found out about this TV reality show that NBC was having, hosting to cast Sandy and Danny in Greece on Broadway. And I, there was something in my spirit that was like, I have to go, like, I might have a shot at this. And I wrote a letter to my director who I was, you know, currently working with at that, in that production. And he gave me the green light to take a weekend of performances off. And I flew to LA and I kept making it farther and farther. And I had to, I was going back and forth. The run was like four months long in Minnesota. And so um, I, I ended up having to leave that production early to move to LA and compete live on TV every week as part of the reality show. And um, it was, it was, I mean, it was joyful, but it was just the, the gruelingness of it all came along with like this expectation. Um, and I think being in the public eye, I was so young, I had never really done anything like that. And I, I got my first like spray tan. And like, we were <laughs> like, you know, we had, we had to perform every week for our survival. So like people were literally calling in and voting. So it was just very stressful. And all the contestants lived together in a house. And so, you know, there was obviously some competitive you know, drama, for the most part, we got along very well. And I still keep in touch with some of those people. But um, it was just, it was a crazy experience. I want to move now to speaking of, you know, theater that you did, I think this was before Greece, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe it was after Greece, I'm not sure about the timeline. But where you met your husband and your first kiss, I love that story. And I want <laughs> to share it with our viewers. <laughs> Absolutely. We were actually dating during the Greece reality show. So it was okay. perfect timing. It was very much interwoven. So I, I had mentioned that I ended up leaving college to start working. I interned at a theater for a year in Minneapolis and um, got points toward my equity card. And it was during that year that I met my husband. So and then it was the year after that where I went to audition for Greece. So we uh, we were boyfriend, girlfriend at the time, um, but we ended up meeting doing a production of Disney's Aladdin of all things. Um, and we understudied the leads. Uh, and it just so happened that one day the real Aladdin and Jasmine collided on stage. He chipped a tooth on her forehead and they had to stop the show and literally sent them to the hospital. He, his tooth was chipped in half and she had to get stitches. And Nate and I went on together as Aladdin and Jasmine. And it was near the beginning of the show. It was in the first song. So we got to do the whole rest of the show together. We <laughs> rode the magic carpet. Um, and they get married at the end in the musical. And so like, I'm literally in like Jasmine's two piece wedding dress, like coming down the aisle. And our first kiss was on stage, like rose petals falling and everybody singing a whole new world. And uh, we kind of had a thing for each other, but I had just actually gone through a breakup. So I was playing a little kind of hard to get. And uh, that going on stage together and showing that moment kind of sealed, sealed the deal. We started dating officially a few days later, had our first offstage kiss. And then he proposed one year, exactly one year later um, from that. And we've now been married 16 years already. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. But but did he know that you were interested in him? Because when, from what I read, you were kind of definitely professional about it. Uh, well, yes, uh, that part of the story, you know, he, he, Nate tells it a little better than I do, but all the guys in the show were like, oh, you got to kiss Laura. Like, and he's like, yeah, yeah, it was great. And then like my side of the story is after we started dating that Nate was like, so like that kiss was pretty magical. Right. And I, I, my response was, oh, that was business <laughs> because obviously I'm an actor and I, any kiss on stage or for work is obviously very professional. Um, so I, I, I did, we did definitely like our chemistry was great on and off stage. I mean, we, I always, I really liked him. I just was kind of wanting to go slow in toward any sort of new relationship because I just gotten out of a, of a relationship that was a year over a year and a half. Um, but I definitely like when we met, I was like, oh, he's different. And like, oh, there are men that can be like him. He's, he's a, he's a good guy. And he would always just look out for me and all of, all of the people in the cast really. But like, he would, he opens, he's such a gentleman and I'm a sucker for that. He like opened doors for people and would offer up his chair. And like, if it was cold, like give me his coat. And like, even before we were really together and especially after we were together, um, he's just, he really has a servant heart and he's an incredible man. 
Wow. That, that, that sounds amazing. And, and, you know, you said, oh, it just so happened that the Jasmine and Aladdin, it, I don't believe in it just so happened. I believe I meant for you to, to have that experience so that you would be brought together. And when you were growing up and you watched Aladdin, did you ever dream that you would get to play Jasmine? I remember that moment in the movie when when she got on the carpet and they went out and then you saw all the stars. And I was with my nephew at the time who was a little boy at the time. And, and we both looked at each other and gasped because it was so beautiful. What was that like on stage? It was unreal. In fact, I, I barely remember it. I think, you know, you're on stage as an understudy and you're just trying to like hit the marks. And I I wish we had gotten to do it one more time together. We didn't. We only got that one performance. They were back the next day and we <laughs> never we never got to do the show again together. And it's it's kind of a blur. Um, but I I love the movie Aladdin. It was one that I like wore out the VHS tape for. I could <laughs> recite it from beginning to end. Um, but never guessed I would get to play Jasmine, mainly because of the ethnicity like I'm right. I'm not the correct ethnicity to ever play Jasmine and I think you know this was literally in 2005 right. in Minnesota at a children's theater company so um you know I've always had the princess voice but you know never never thought Jasmine of all the princesses I, I would get to play and so um it was kind of a very much a once in a lifetime opportunity and a total showmance came of it and I, I think you're right it was it was destined to be God knew what he was doing yes. but it's no un un yeah, but it's unfortunate that it had to happen at at their expense. You know, like oh, they yeah. were both <laughs> kind yeah. of severe, severely injured um, in order to pave the way for Nate and I to get to have this moment. Right. Yeah, well. they, but they must have heard how good you guys were, and that's why they rushed back. They probably <laughs> busted out of the hospital. They said, "We got to get back on stage before we lose our gig." <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> I want to talk about you. You mentioned, uh, Laura, a few minutes ago about being an actor. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about next, because in addition to your success on stage, you've also enjoyed success on screen. And I mentioned in the intro those five Hallmark movies. So where did that transition? How did that all happen going from stage to screen? I was very afraid of the camera for many years and I would audition for TV film stuff and never book it, uh, mainly because I was so green. I, I had no experience um, and musical theater was very much my love from when I was a child. Um, and so I finally, I got this opportunity. I got a straight offer to do a Hallmark movie in 2018, I think. Um, the character in the movie had to sing and I, it was a friend who I had worked with in New York that knew the producer or the director of this Hallmark movie and put my name in the hat. And, um, I was fortunate enough. The director knew who I was of all things and gave me a straight offer. And I was so terrified. I it was like, I told my parents, I was like, please like pray for me. Before this movie. I didn't sleep for like a week before beginning to film just because I had no idea what I was doing. And I was very, um, I was just kind of came to the director humbly and was like, hi, yes, I've, I have lots of stage experience, but this is my first movie. So like, I just like take me under your wing and show me the ropes. And if I look weird, please tell me I will learn. I'm excited to learn and I'm grateful to be here, but like, uh, like show me, show me how to do it. And she, um, her, her name is Claire Naderprum, the director of that first film that I did with Hallmark. She is, was like my age, she was totally like a sister and like totally just like was so gracious and generous with me. And Hallmark was very loyal. And I guess, I guess it went well because they were very loyal and had me back for four more movies over the, the coming years. And I actually have a new Christmas movie coming out this Christmas um, on the Great American Family Network. So uh, it's like kind of a Hallmark adjacent, very kind of similar content. They do a bunch of Christmas movies too. So I'm excited to get to, to share that this coming season as well. well. That's wonderful. I mean, there are many, many people, as you know, who put the Hallmark channel on and it's on all day. All the time. Yep. All 24 seven, you know, so uh, I'm sure that, that many, many people have seen your movies and we'll look forward to the next ones coming out when you were young Laura because you said you had a love for musical theater as a child when did you discover though that you had a gift that 
far surpassed, mm-hmm. say, you know, the level of other kids your age. That's very kind. I I think um, I sang like Castle on the Cloud from Les Mis at my kindergarten talent show and grew up like singing in church. I booked my first role in third grade. I played Amaryllis in The Music Man, which the high school was doing, my, my high school at the time. So I was already like, okay, in third grade, like of all of the kids in the show, like I got the speaking role. Um, And then I guess just continued. I started working professionally in sixth grade at uh, the children's theater company in Minneapolis, which is happens to be the theater where I met Nate, my husband. So Mm -hmm. I started working at that theater when I was like 13 and I, you know, did lots of shows there throughout my youth. And that is a Tony award winning regional theater. It is um, a, a, a wonderful, wonderful educational place that also puts on excellent quality shows for children and for families. And um, I guess like, I don't, I just, I, I kept getting opportunities to, to work and then eventually booked um, the Guthrie's Christmas performance of a Christmas Carol. They do it every year again with a speaking role playing Martha Cratchit, which is, you know, the oldest Cratchit child. And so I guess I just, I don't know if there was ever a moment where I was like, I am so talented (laughs) because there were definitely things I didn't get. Like I community theater, Wizard of Oz did not get Dorothy. My best friend got it, you know, somewhere between eighth grade and ninth grade. And like this, this, this career is full of ups and downs and you can't ever base, base your worth or your talent on whether you get the role or not. There are so many things that go into, um, actually getting an opportunity to get to share your gift and do what you love um and so I think I I also had to get over that at a young age and go sure I'm talented but so is everyone else so did you study did Did you did you I don't mean to interrupt you but I mean or or did the voice it was just there did you have to hone it and and learn how to utilize it I did take voice lessons as a kid, but singing always came very naturally to me. And I think I came out of the womb with the gift that I have and yes, honed it over the years, but it always came naturally to me. Same with dance. I took dance lessons for 14, 13, 14 years, as I said. And um, those were always the things that I loved and gravitated towards. And my parents saw that I had a gift for it. And I had wonderful mentors and teachers that always said yes and encouraged me in that in that direction but um it just I was grateful that opportunities opened and I again my my parents supported and encouraged me and I know that that is half the battle so many so many kids don't have a mom that can drive them to dance rehearsals or don't have the the budget to be able to take all of those classes and lessons and um I yes I I was fortunate enough to train you know as much as possible as a kid but um I also had a kind of natural knack for that trip, for the whole triple threat thing. Right. Not surprised. (laughs) Thanks. Now, Laura, we've, we've talked about a a lot of these performances, different types of performances that you've turned in over the years. And I'm just going to switch gears just a little bit because there was um, a performance that you didn't give for all the right reasons in 2021 that led to kind Mm -hmm. of an unexpected turn for you in your career. And I was wondering if you could share with us the story of, of what happened, but more importantly, how you managed to stay strong and come out victorious on the other side, if I may quote your EP. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. So I I, I spent 14 years in New York City and got to headline six Broadway shows. Um, I, I loved that community so much. I finally felt like I found my stride. My dream came true. Um um, many wonderful relationships there with incredible artists that I got to work with. Um, and obviously COVID hit New York City really, really hard. Um, everything was shut down and especially my industry, live performance just was not um, allowed. Large groups of people gathering in a small space, people singing on each other. It just uh, was not a thing. So um, I think a lot of people in my industry were kind of fueled by uh, I hate I hate to say it, but like fear and anxiety in that season, which a lot of people were, a lot of the people, um, you know, across the country and world were. But uh, New York began instigating uh, vaccine mandates uh, in the summer and fall of 2021. And there was a tiny like one night concert I had agreed to do as things were kind of beginning to come back 
a little bit. Um, and suddenly the, ven the venue for this concert, it was on Long Island, was mandating the vaccine. And my husband and I hadn't yet been vaccinated and um, we're still not. But that uh, because of that mandate, I had to just back out of that concert. The director emailed everybody in the cast and I was honest with her and said, I'm not yet vaccinated. Guess I'll have to back out. And uh, a week, she totally understood and was cool and kosher about it and kind. And then a week later, there was an article in the New York Post saying that I was fired for refusing to be vaccinated and that I had lied about my status and put my coworkers at risk. And my entire 14 year reputation and my, my character and my work ethic and none of that mattered. And everything was thrown out the window because of a decision I had made on this one issue. And um, I pretty much lost my career overnight <laughs> all in my, and my friendships. Like most people just turned against me and I continued to lose four big jobs that I had lined up after that because um, no one wanted to associate with me in that season. And um, my husband and I knew we had to get out of New York. It just wasn't even safe. And um, we escaped to Franklin, Tennessee where we have been met with open arms <laughs> and respect and kindness and it's not that everybody thinks the same way here but there's at least um respect as i said for differing opinions and we absolutely love it so as far as coming out the other side it was a year of a kind of de depression i will i'll be honest and say it was dark it was really dark and bleak and i didn't i had put so much of my identity in my career and in being the musical theater person. It was all I'd ever known. It was all I ever studied, all I ever wanted to do, and I was doing it. And so I've had to figure out who I am without that and that I still have worth without that and um, how else to use my gifts and the gifts God gave me in new creative ways. Um, because part of me was like, well, I guess I'm destined to work at Crate and Barrel for the rest of my life. And no offense to anyone who works at, at Crate and Barrel, but I was literally like, well, I'm done. I I can't ever risk getting on a stage again. I was in just such a very, very vulnerable place. And over the last two years, it's just been a slow process of healing and forgiving and being surrounded by people who are uh, buoying me back to a place of um, just confidence and and care and value after going through something like that. Well, Laura, I, first of all, it's astounding that people, first of all, would pay attention to anything written in the in the New York Post. I mean, <laughs> they are notoriously sensationalistic. That gossip yeah. column, that's what it was. Yep. Without verifying anything. And and the friends that didn't even bother to call you and say, is this true? And And not that it's really even their business, Right. You know, I know during a pandemic, by the nature of it being a pandemic, it does things affect affected the entire world. So so I, I understand how lines get blurred and whatnot. But I, I just think it's very sad that I, I think you're right. I think that the fear was so strong at that time that that people just were not the rational people that they would be had that not happened. And, you know, so hopefully at some point there can be forgiveness and healing from that experience for you, you know, because that, that is a, a really challenging experience, but I have no doubt that now that you're in, in Tennessee, that you will find a place even performing at the Opry. I mean, I, I you know, I can't imagine you're That's not going to Oh yeah, I I, I see it. <laughs> and, and, and I wanted to pick up pick up from there, Laura, because um, you know I mentioned when I when I kind of um, took your your on the other side title there in, in my last question when I asked it uh, from your EP, um, you've recorded that EP, and one of the things that that really fascinates me is that you're now singing your words and your songs after all those years of singing other people's words and other people's yeah. songs, how cool is that? And how hard is it? Thank you. Yes. Um, that's You took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, that's what I say is that I've been an expert at bringing someone else's work to life my entire life. And now for the first time, I'm beginning to share my heart and my story. And I felt like God was kind of calling me to begin songwriting and sharing my story through song because I felt silenced um, everywhere else. 
and I could still use my gift uh, in, in that way. But it's, to be honest, it's, it, it's hard. It's very hard to be vulnerable in that way. And it's also writing and songwriting hasn't really come naturally to me. I'll just be honest and say like, it's not like, Oh, easy. Like I jumped right in and I'm so great at it. Like, I feel like it's a skill that I'm still, I'm trying to learn and see if I can ever love it. I still have songs coming out. I released that EP. I released two songs over the summer and I have a new one I'm working on for uh, release in the new year. Um, but it's, it's been a little bit of an uphill climb just because um, I don't, I feel like an old dog learning a new trick, but I'm not letting that stop me. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, I still feel like I'm called to do this. Um, I think it's important to challenge yourself and do things that are hard and not give up just because it's, it's not easy. Um, I think it's important. I'm, I just keep hoping and praying that the people who need to hear these songs are hearing them. Um, and it's, it's been a cathartic kind of healing experience for me, despite <laughs> some of the uphill climb um, in the creative process. Well, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Isn't that lyrics to a song as well? You know, exactly. How about Nate? Now, does he have a knack for writing? I know he's a photographer, but does he write? Do you write together? Do, do you? I know you said you play the piano a little bit. We see that yeah. piano behind you. So, do you guys um, ever uh, collaborate? We have not written songs together, but he did play the drums on two songs of my EP. So Nate, we have a drum set back here too, which I'm oh, I didn't I see that. in front of. I know. So um, Nate did grow up as a musician. Um, he sings a little bit, played drums in a couple different bands in Minnesota. Um, so he does have that gift and he's very musically minded. So we haven't written songs together, but he has been a huge part of listening to um getting these songs produced and giving notes on the production before things are released into the world um, and having a very musical mind that way. So I've been very grateful to have him on board, helping, helping just as a, another ear on these songs. Wonderful. Or I'll tell you uh, for what it's worth, um, you're now in the area where in my humble opinion, the greatest songwriters in the world are, and we've had dozens and dozens and dozens of them on our show. So if there's ever anything we can do to maybe hook you up or help you get together with somebody for a collaboration, you know, just have your people contact our people. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. It's so kind of you. Thank you. I have to say, like, it has been incredible being here in Nashville. Like, and in a way, it's like, oh, my goodness, what am I doing here? I don't I uh, they're the best, as you said, the best of the best are here. And I just feel so green in the songwriting side of things. However, the people I've collaborated with so far have been nothing but generous and kind and have held my hand. Uh, so beautifully and like mentored me. And um, I, I will absolutely reach out to you again, if there's a specific collaboration or a resource um, that I can ask you guys about, I, I appreciate that. I've, so many people have offered um, their, just their connections and their expertise in the industry. And I've been very, very grateful. So thank you. Well, that's wonderful. And, and definitely we, that door and invitation is open. And Laura, it has been so wonderful talking to you, getting to know you. Thank you for sharing not only the great times, but the challenges, the, the heartbreak, you know, that, that you've been through recently. And, and, you know, we wish you healing. We look forward to the new music that you have coming out and thank we'll you. have to have you back sometime. So thank you for joining us. Laura, before my partner closes us out, I just want to let you know that you are now on my official list, not just the favorite singers and now songwriters. You're on my list of heroes for all you've done Aww. and all you've come through. Thank you. My goodness. What an honor. <laughs> I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And folks, thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good week. I woke up scrolling through my phone Comparison's a thief I've come to know He whispers you're not good enough And I believe him Can't help it when I'm seeing what I'm seeing She's got it all, she's so in love She's got the look, she's got the job She's got it good, ain't insecure 
must be easier But on the other side of the world There's another lonely girl Probably wishing she could stand here in my shoes I've been the one searching for more Jealous of the girl next door I bet you some days you feel that way too why do we want what we can have? Cause we have everything and that should be enough So when it's tough, enjoy the ride Cause the grass ain't always greener on the other side This week's episode has been brought to you by Doherty & Company Insurance Services for all your business and personal insurance needs. Our friends at Tennis Addiction in Exton, PA. And the Mallon Agency, where exceeding expectations is how they do business. Interested in becoming a partner in positivity? Send us an email, rosieandbillshow2018 at gmail.com.